Printer profiles are another form of color management that allow you to get as close as possible to making sure what you see on the screen is what you see when you output or you print your, your file. And for our class, um, at the end of the semester during Project 11, you'll be required to export your files to various file formats and then you need to print three of your favorite projects from the semester. You're going to print it on a photo quality inkjet printer and you're going to use photo paper. And so I'm going to show you the settings that, that are literally for the printer that we'll be using if you come to campus to print. But it's the same idea, you'll just translate it for the printers that you're using. And so it's a couple, it's a couple stepped process. You can't just hit file print and hope it works. You need to have a realistic expectation of what you should be seeing. And so the first thing that you have to do when you're ready to print is you need to proof the print. So you could print it and you could say, oh, what does it look like? Or you could do what's called a soft proof. And if you go to the view menu and proof setup, there are some preset choices that you could make. Um, but what you really want is you want to proof um, you want to proof that's aligned to your output, right? So if you are proofing for commercial offset printing and you chose the swap standards, and we learned about that in the previous demo, um, if you're choosing the swap standards, you want to proof on the swap standards. And so if you go to view, proof, setup, and custom, you can say, see how the screen changed automatically? You can say, and you can find on the list here, that you're proofing for a printing company that's telling you that they're calibrated to US web coded swap v2 right and then this gives you an accurate representation and this does not look anything like the image that we were just looking at it's dull and it's kind of bland and washed out but it allows us to then go back and say well what can I do to manipulate the image to make it look bright and and vibrant again and so when you're ready to print for our class we have Canon printers Canon Pixa Pixma, Pixma Pro uh, printers. And so the way that they work is that when you install the printer with the computer, the print profiles for the most common paper are already installed. And so if we look on our list, we can find the Canon Pro 1, that's the Pixma Pro that we print on. And then you can find the paper that you're going to print on. And right now, right next to me, I have the Photo Paper Pro Premium Matte, and then I also have sheets that are the Photo Paper Pro Semi Gloss. And so if I'm going to print to the matte, I would look on the list for Photo Paper Pro Premium Matte. And then it has these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 1, 2. There's a serial number or a model number, a make number on the paper. And so the make number of this paper is PM101. And so it's in the 100s. And so I would choose the paper. Photo Paper Pro Premium Matte, and the one represents all the numbers in the 100s. If it was 403, I would have to find one that says 4. It doesn't exist though, because it's not on my list. Okay, so you would choose that. Your screen would change, and see how it's even more washed out now? Um, it's kind of sad, and you kind of feel frustrated that it's not going to print the way you want, but this is a lot, at least showing you an accurate representation. So now I could go back, and I could say, well, what can I do to this image to make it print the way I want? I don't like that it's all washed out. And one of my favorite little hacks, well there's a couple that I like, but you can duplicate the layer and you can change your layer blending mode, which we'll learn about, and you could do overlay. And so overlay has intensified the colors. I don't know if I'm getting what I want now because it's really dark, so maybe I could add a brightness and contrast adjustment and I could, on the properties panel here, I could increase the brightness to bring the brightness back. And then if I compare that to the way it was going to print, and then I turn those layers back on, maybe this is something that I want to print. Another little hack, let's get rid of that layer and that layer, is you can use your levels command. So there's many ways to apply what's called levels. I like to do the adjustment layer because they are fully editable if you mess up and you want to change it. But the way that levels works is you can adjust how much of your image is the darkest dark or the lightest light and then you can slide the medium tones on the inside. And so my blacks are kind of washed out here so if I drag the black slider to the right more of the image will become darker and so I'm getting darker darks if I wanted to print darker darks. And then you could slide this medium slider in the middle until you get the bright color that you wanted from before. And so now I can compare kind of the washed out version 
to the version that it will print almost identical to this. Now there's another level, there's so many levels to color management, but there's another level um, taking into consideration whether or not the computer screen is calibrated. And the ones in room 1-165 are not calibrated, but if I were to calibrate them, I would have an even more accurate representation of the way it would print. And so if I just printed right now, and I said, okay, file print, print to the Canon, print on the photo premium mat, which is, is good practice to make sure you're syncing your printer profiles to what you need. Um, I would be frustrated because it's printed kind of bland and dull. But if you proof it first and you recognize it's going to print bland and dull, you can modify and make edits in Photoshop. You can kind of, you basically, you're pumping the color, right? So the color is telling you, based on the information provided, it's not going to print really bright. But I've pumped the color back in. And so if I was to turn this off, it might look way too bright. So if you go back to view and proof, I can put it back on monitor RGB. And now it looks kind of intense, like my eyes hurt, it's so bright. But that's because on screen, this is what it would look like on a computer screen. But proofing it, I'm saying what would it look like if I was actually printing it on the paper and the printer that that I'm actually outputting it on. Okay, I must have hit something weird because it's it's uh, a little trippy right now. So I'm going to hit cancel. But now I can see how it would actually print. Okay, so for right now, you don't have to be able to do this, but you should recognize that it's important and that it exists. During chapter 24, we'll cover this again and we'll cover it in more detail.